Okay, our, uh, the next part of our video will be discussing um, um, file system maintenance and uh, monitoring file systems and things of that type. And um, the first thing is file systems get, uh, by nature, they get screwed up every now and then. Um, there's a certain amount of file corruption can get into files. One of the major causes of this is if the your disk drive, because uh, especially modern file systems such as NTFS or one of the EXT uh, file systems, in order to make them work fast, they keep information, they keep a buffer in RAM so that they don't have to read or write to, RAM, to the hard disk every time your program actually um, um, ask it to read and write to hard drive. Instead, it keeps a little buffer in RAM, and it goes to and from that. And then just as it gets time, it will write the buffer down to the hard drive, or it will read the buffer from the hard drive. Um, or read information from the hard drive and keep it in buffer. That means that makes things much, much faster. Um, and all modern file systems use this um, technique. But it also means that should you suddenly lose power to your computer, you'll lose that buffer and you'll get some hard drive corruption. Um, there are various other reasons for getting hard drive corruption too, but, but the major reasons are um, loss of power or some sort of an interference with the normal process. And uh, this, effect, uh, this is especially serious on a, a more modern hard drives, but the truth is um, it will affect DOS file systems and things of that type too because um, you know, if you cut power in the middle of writing a file, well, you don't get the file written. Um, okay, so you need some way to at least, to some extent, patch up file systems that have been corrupted. Um, you probably won't get the files back entirely correctly, but uh, at least you will get the integrity of the file system back. Um, Windows has, or at least Windows used to have a command called check disk for this. DOS had check disk that would fix up file systems. Windows had check disk. Um, I think um, it, they no longer use that name, but they still have a function for that purpose. Uh, in Uni most Unix systems use a command called FSCK. Uh, Linux uses the command FSCK. And of course, sometimes they, there are variants of that command, like fsck.ext2, um, fsck.ext3, for fixing particular file types. Or you can just use fsck with a um, minus t and then the type of the file system for any type of file system. Um, the file systems, when you fix the file system, the file system has to be shut down, meaning you have to have the file system you mounted. Um, so let's see if I can find a file system here that we can um, do an FSCK on. Now, as I say, um, I'm going to use the file system alt uh, system. It's not terribly big or impressive, but um, it's a good file system that we'll be able to use to do an FSCK. Uh, the first thing I have to do is you mount that file system. Then all I do is FSCK slash DEV. Now, I can't call that file slash alt sys because um, that's just a mount point, and the mount point could be anything, right? So I have to call it by the physical name, um, like this. And this basically tells me my file system is clean. Um, it didn't actually repair the file system, um, I don't think, not unless the file system was corrupted. There are a lot of options on FSCK. Let's look at some of the options. 
Among the options are um, a minus T for file type. Um, there's a minus F here someplace for force repair. No, I think there's a minus F. There's also a minus Y, which is an interesting option, so, uh, because the um, FSCK often asks you questions as it processes the thing. And that's bad if you're trying to do this from a shell script. So there's a minus guess that basically says, answer yes to every question. And a minus in that says, answer no to every question. And the questions are always, do you want to repair the system? So you can either make it, uh, no, I don't want to repair the system, in which case you're just doing it in kind of a, a, check, a check mode. Or you can do minus Y, which repairs the system automatically. So let's try this again. Let's try it with the minus F. OK. And in this case, it went through and it did. It, it um, checked my inodes, my blocks, my sizes. And it basically just went through, checked the whole file system. And it would have repaired the file system had it found any errors. And this is a non-corrupted file system. So it's kind of boring because it doesn't find errors. Um, uh, let's mount the file system once again. Um, mount slash alt system. And my file system's back now. Let's go over to alt system. And it's, it's a really boring file system, so you're not going to see much interesting. But uh, one of the things you find here is a directory called lost and found. Um, that tends to be a directory in all Unix-like file systems. And that directory is basically where a directory where um, that the system builds, um, make fs, make mkfs creates that directory. And it's a directory where fsck can stick um, broken links and chunks of files it finds um, that it doesn't know what to do with. It will just stick them in that directory. And maybe you can use those chunks to rebuild missing things, but they're pretty hard to use. Um, I mean, if, if you're desperate, that's the place to go. Um, and uh, you may be able to use that to rebuild some of your information if you lose a lot of information. A better deal is if you find some files. FSCK tells you about some corrupted files. Um, um, just get rid of those files, and uh, or FSCK will kind of fix the um, the broken links and stuff. But the file may be truncated because it didn't have all the file to work with. And then go to your backup media and get a good copy off your backup media. That's much much easier and more reliable than trying to repair it from. Uh, broken clusters that you might find or might not find in uh, Lost and Found. So, um, OK. And um, FSCK will run every time you mount the file system by um, every so many times you mount the file system. That's configurable. But I think by default, it's like about every 20 times you um, that the system mounts a file system, it will try to do a uh, FSCK on it. Um, so um, that's kind of good. Now, I told you that, remember, I told you that the file system had to be U-mounted in order to um, do a file system check. That is really difficult with your root partition, since you have to have your root partition to run the system. So there's a couple ways of doing FSCK on the root file system. One way, of course, is boot on Nopix and then do FSCK on your root file system, uh, since it's no longer the root file system if you're running off Nopix. The second method is to um, um, is that there are options on FSCK that will allow it to run um, 
um, when the system is really shut down and, and very quiet, it will take care of the U-mounting and the remounting for you. And there, there are options in FSCK to take care of that. OK, next thing is monitoring file systems. There are various commands for monitoring file systems. Uh, DF, DF tells you how much space is being used on your file system. As you can see, I use DF a lot. And I usually use it with the minus H option, which says do a DF and make it human readable. The other option that is really nice on DF is there's a minus I, which says uh, instead of looking for the file system itself, look for the um, Instead of looking at the amount of space that's used on the file system, look at the number of free inodes. This is important because it is possible to have space on a file system and not be able to use it because you've ran out of inodes. That's a rare happening, but it, it does happen. So uh, once in a while, you'll want to do a, uh, a check of the inode status by doing a DF minus I. Um, OK, um, du is a nice command. What du does is du will tell you um, uh, basically how much storage is being used in directories under a file system. So in this case, uh, dmandel is, being, is using um, 9 gigabytes. SUS is using. 260 megs. And basically, this will tell you how much um, storage is used in the entire tree under dmandel and the entire tree under SUS. Uh, this is really nice, because if you look at, as an example, ls minus l, that tells you nothing about just how uh, this, that's really not very useful um, in telling you how much disk space is used. ds minus l is or ls minus l is very useful in telling you various things about your files at the directory level. But it doesn't do you much good when you're trying to examine the total amount of disk space used. For that, you want to use du. iostat is a command that will basically give you some information about the um, how heavy, how Hard your disk I/O stat will tell you, give you information about um, disk activities, so you can tell whether your disk are being, um, um, whether your system is bogging down, not because your CPU is bogged down, but because you've got too much disk I/O. Uh, this is a command that's really important for. Um, um, systems that run large databases. Uh, scientific systems, we don't, we don't usually get into that sort of trouble. What we get into is trouble over, um, um, over um, CPU usage, not I.O. usage. Database systems have a lot of trouble with bogging down I.O. usage. There's, an, there's other commands that will do this as well. One of them is called, I think it's I.O. top. Uh, IOTOP does a similar thing in another format. Um, it's a cool command for that. SAR, uh, well, there's various commands for that. But the two best ones are IOSTAT and um, IOTOP. Um, OK, next we're going to look at. Um, the book goes through and looks at Logical Volume Management Manager, LVM. The book does an excellent job on this. Um, I've got nothing to add, so I won't try to add anything. The book did not talk about RAID, because I think RAID is talked about in a later chapter. But, um, but RAID is worth mentioning, and um, um, except I'm running out of time. Um, Disk quotas is another topic which is covered in the book. And I won't cover because the book does an excellent job on it. Um, and lastly, um, we could talk 
a little bit about handling d corrupted data. And if I get time, I might make a video just on handling corrupted data. But um, um, it's not a 